Hello everyone and welcome back to Brooksburg Zoo. We are in episode 10 already and first of all we're going to have a look again at what had happened since the last episode. I was busy off screen, you can see right here, I did a little bit of gardening. So this is our royal garden in here. I think I might not be completely finished with it but I've done a lot and I think it fits the area perfectly. Okay, this guy needs to see the toilet. Um, yeah, let's have a short walk through our royal gardens before we walk along the lemur house, the Madagascar house, not the lemur house because we have Fusa in there as well. So let's walk around the royal gardens and enjoy the view from here. I really enjoy how it all comes together right now and I think our guests do that as well. I just hope that we have enough stuff to clean up the area because this whole area here where I was only laying down the path was such a mess. You can see it around everywhere. There's still a lot of trash on the ground so hopefully this will change in the future. Yeah, and let's have a look at our Madagascar house that we finished in the last episode. We have in this house some Fusa, some red ruffed lemurs, some ringtail lemurs. We also do have the, oh, I always forget the name, it's the giant, the Madagascar giant rat and the lowland striped tenrec which are fake animals, there's no animals in those exhibits, but yeah, I think those exhibits fit in here perfectly. Yeah, the ringtail lemurs. And now let's move on to the next chapter in the zoo. We are right between the habitats of the bongos on the left side and the African wild dogs on the right side. And I asked my community on Discord what I should do next. If we should build an island for the new gibbons that we have in the game, or if we should buy a uh, buy, build. Oh my god. If we should build islands for the CMang and the gibbons, or if we should build a house for the pygmy hippos and also include the red river hawks in there. Yeah, and um, as you can see, I'm not building islands, I'm building a house again. Um, hopefully, this is going to be the last house for at least uh, five, six episodes. I, I hope so. Um, yeah. We're building a house and we're building this house for Pygmy Hippo and the Red River Hawks. A little bit of a spoiler ahead for all of you guys that are waiting to see the Red River Hawks of the Pygmy Hippos. I have to tell you there's not going any animals in today's episode. Because this was such a huge project, um, I did try to build realistic as I did in the last few episodes as well and building realistic things is always taking a lot of time and a lot of detail. So no animals in today's build but we are going to see I think a really really unique and beautiful house here. First of all that what you can see right now the facade of the house that I'm creating is going to change in a few minutes because as I finished it and had a look at it I decided no that's not going to happen this looks nice but this this does too much look like Litchfield this is a building that you actually would see in Litchfield Zoo my other sandbox series uh, the Australian Zoo and I didn't want to mix that up so I changed the facade a little bit um, in the next chapter I think in about five to ten minutes um, yeah because this just didn't work for me yeah. 
And with the addition of the pygmy hippos and the red river hawks in this area, this is something like a little bit of a Congo area because we do have the Okapi, we do have the Bongo, now the Pygmy Hippo and also the Red River Hog which live in an area um, quite similar to each other and quite overlapping sometimes. The only animal that might be perfect to fit the whole theme here or the only animal that is uh, still missing in here is uh, the gorilla but yeah I'm, I don't think that we are going to build that soon for the gorillas no I don't think so I think when uh, this one here is finished and we have the habitat for uh, the pygmy hippo finished uh, we're going to build the islands for Sia Magna and Gibbons. That was usually the plan um, to do. So, no gorillas in the near future. Yeah, and I'm also planning to have a combined habitat for the pygmy hippos with the Nyala. But there is a slight problem for that. Um, as I'm building the house for the hippos, you're going to see the inside of the house uh, very soon, as, uh, as we are finished with it. Uh, we have a typical hippo indoor area with uh, yeah, two indoor habitats for, uh, for each specimen, with a pool in there and a little land area where they can have food and rest and stuff like that. So we want to share the habitat with the Niala, but we don't want the Niala to go into that house. Which is very difficult because I assume, I don't know, but I assume that the hitbox from the Niala might be a little bit uh, smaller than the hitbox for uh, the pygmy hippo, or at least they are at similar size, so I can't build with uh, some things like uh, wooden pillars or something where the hippos uh, can't walk through that but the Nyala can. Um, well this doesn't much, uh, make much sense. Uh, where the Nyalas can walk through that but the hippos can't. This just won't work. So uh, this would not be possible. So the only thing I thought that would make the thing possible is if I do something like I did with my uh, panoramic series, you might have watched this, um, where I built habitats for four or even five or I think I did six as well. Yeah, for four or five uh, different animal species and the whole thing looks like it was just one single habitat but in reality it is um, four or five so that the animals can't come into the habitat of the other animal. So that is something that I'm trying to do with being, uh, yeah, with having something like um, yeah, like uh, like a water section uh, to be the border between those two habitats, so that the Nyalas are not able to go into that water and have a swim, because it is uh, too steep for them to go in there, and also the pygmy hippos are not able to go out there and um, go on the land area for the Nyala. So that's that's the plan. Uh, yeah, but that's not going to happen today because today we are going to build the house and finish the house. The Nyalas also won't have some space in this house, so there will be a different build for uh, them, um, which will be connected to this building and um, also in a similar look that we did for the Bongo, the Wildebeest and um, the Warthog. So we're going to have something like that connected to this house for them. Yeah, here you can already see those two indoor habitats. Um, pygmy hippos live mostly solitary. 
So this means they only come together or join the other sexes when they are breeding, when it is breeding season. So all the other time around uh, they are not living in any family groups and not playing happy family when, uh, once the baby is here. So the, um, after breeding is done they separate and go their own paths again. So this is why you will see in almost every zoo or yeah in every zoo which has pygmy hippos that they have two separate habitats for the animals at least two uh, separate indoor habitats where they can separate them and uh, yeah only let them come together for breeding reasons and that is something that I'm doing here as well so we have uh, this um, bigger right one um, indoor habitat here I assume this would be the habitat for uh, the female with her offspring which would make uh, which would make sense, and the, the left one, the smaller one, would be for the male. We're not going to have two separate outdoor habitats in here, uh, yeah, because I thought that would be a little bit too much. So we're only having one outdoor area, and here we are not going to separate those animals, so they will be living together the whole time, and. Um, just in theory they would be uh, separated. Yeah, here with those colors of the concrete pieces you can already see the separation between the habitat for the animals and the keeper's path that is going to be right uh, behind that. That is something that you usually see in those houses for uh, hippos, for rhinos, uh, elephants and stuff like that. There's always this keeper path right behind those uh, animal enclosures. And as I was watching this building right here, I was thinking about the left area that she, here you can already see the outside of, um, of the building that I changed. I think it looks much better now and much more fitting for Brooksburg Zoo. Um, yeah. Um, what did I want to say? Yes, as I was looking into the building and how I uh, how I came up with the ideas uh, where to put the animals. I was thinking that the left indoor habitat, the completely left uh, one, so not the left from the pygmy hippos, um, uh, the habitat on the left side is going to be for uh, the red river hawks. And I was staring at it and thinking, this is way too big. And so I decided to change the house once again. Uh, made it a little bit smaller so that the indoor area for the uh, for the pygmy hippos for the red river hawks is a little bit smaller and makes much more sense so sometimes it is not that easy for me i'm coming close to it but it's not always that easy for me to uh, go with this realistic builds because usually when i'm building something for uh, these animals in uh, in my zoos i'm just uh, yeah, I'm just building and uh, doing much bigger habitats because you might think, okay, they need uh, a water area, they need a land area, they need this and that and, and uh, after you finished you have such a big, big area for, uh, for this animal, such a big habitat where they do have much more space than they would need. So building in this realistic style here in this zoo also means that I'm trying to build realistic sized habitats and uh, thinking a little bit smaller and cramp things up a little bit more and having not that much open space in there. Um, it is really fun to do that but it's not always that easy because most of the times I have to, uh, yeah, I have to get in there once again and change things up because whether it is uh, too small or it is uh, 
<laughs> no, it's not. It's never too small. Uh, but most of the times, it's uh, it's just too big what I was building. Yeah, here you can already see how big the indoor area for the hawks was. And uh, yeah, it, it just didn't make, uh, make much sense to give them that much space indoors because they are pretty much smaller than the pygmy hippos and uh, have almost the same space than both of the indoor habitats for the pygmy hippos combined. So uh, yeah, this just didn't make that much sense. I also built two entrances for sure for the pygmy hippos. Um, one is just a fake entrance, so we only have one keeper's gate for the pygmy hippos. The other one in the middle for the male habitat is, is just a fake gate. And once again I was building here without knowing exactly how big the hitboxes from these animals are going to be. And once again it is just hoping and praying that the animals will be able to walk around everywhere, to reach everything and uh, especially for the pygmy hippos be able to get into the water. But I think they will because I built something pretty similar um, or in a, in a similar style in Arizona Adventure Park, uh, one of my finished zoos. Um, I did also a series with about 50 episodes here on YouTube. Um, so if you haven't watched that, uh, feel free to check that out. Um, and I had a hippo house in there as well, uh, which featured the big ones and also the small hippos. And uh, they were perfectly able to use those stairs to walk into the water. So I'm hoping that it will work out this time as well. And uh, they will be able to get in, uh, get in there. Because as you know, sometimes those hitboxes that we have in the game, especially for the OG animals from the base game, are ridiculous. So... Uh, yeah, at this point I'm just hoping for the best. So because I wanted the house to not be too plain and clean, I wanted to have some of these planters in here that I just stole from the outside of the warthog habitat. Put one right here in front of the red river hogs and also one between those two habitats for the pygmy hippos. And here right in between where our visitors can see into the habitat from the anim uh, for the animals, uh, I used those glass pieces. I think I didn't do that in this zoo already. No, I did that uh, for the Okapi house. We have those, gla uh, those glass pieces in there as well. Here's the second planter. I also did that um, also in the background for the uh, hippo habitat where we have this, uh, this kind of bow right now. Um, because the whole building looked like something from... Um, what is it called? I just don't know the name of the game anymore, but it looked very, very uh, square and uh, just, yeah, pixely. And 
yeah to make it to make it not look that square anymore and give it a little bit more of lighter shape uh, I used these roundish things to uh, to get into to break that uh, to get in there to break that up a little bit yeah, here's some more gates where you can uh, separate the animals and one more for the water section and here you can see on the left side I still do have two of those habitats for uh, the hawks and this is going to change I think in just a few seconds. A little bit more decoration on the inside. I also put in those smaller um, fences right before the glass pieces because I didn't want the visitors to go too close to the glass and maybe uh, yeah throw things in there for the animals and so I decided to have this second fencing here as well to keep them a little bit away from the animals especially for the Red River Hawks so that no one is uh, reaching in there and trying to touch the animals which I would assume is never a good idea but especially not when you handle with pigs The inside of the house is already finished, so right now what we are going to do is some decoration on the outside. And after we did some decorating, we are going to build the roof. Which is once again going to be something very special and something very unique once again. Um, it wasn't that easy, it was a hell of a job to do but in the end it turned out like I wanted it to and I really had fun with it and I, I, no I didn't have fun with it that is a lie <laughs> I absolutely had no fun with that roof but um, yeah I'm happy with it and I really like how it looks that's the truth The thing that I'm trying to create here or that I'm creating right here is some kind of an arch. I did that similar to the things that we put around the trees that the animals don't feed on the trees. Um, I just did this circular movement here with copying those pieces around so that we have something like a bow that we could put over our entrance here. You will see in a second how it looks afterwards yeah just like this yeah and I don't know how you guys cope with the new feature here I'm always misclicking. I'm always misclicking with this thing. Uh, I think I told you in the last episode, but sometimes it really gets on my nerves. Especially when you are building something, something pretty big, um, like uh, I did with the roof, and you are selecting 
let's say 20 or 30 different pieces and you want to move them exactly on a specific angle and then you misclick. And you can't get back to the point where you want those pieces to be. So the only thing that you can do or the only thing that's going to happen is you deselect those pieces and select them once again and hope that you don't misclick once again. So, uh, oh my god, this is... There's a saying in Germany, um, there's also the same in, in English, let me think about a second, that is, um, yeah, the worst things happen with good intentions or something like that. I think you know what I mean. So uh, this was definitely something that was made with good intentions, but uh, the outcome is not that great. <laughs> Let's say it like this. It's not that great. But that was something that I already thought when I saw the announcement of the new DLC and the update when uh, when the people from Frontship were talking about the new features in the game and uh, they talked about this feature and I was just thinking, okay, hmm, who needs that? Because it, it I, I saw what it was meant for and I understood, but I didn't know when this would make sense for me or when I would use that. Yeah, but never mind. Yeah, and here you saw once again that happening. Um, yeah. So here I was building with those wooden beams to decorate the walls a little bit and um, shake the whole feeling of the house up once again. So that we don't have these plain walls and that is something that you already see sometimes in uh, houses for, uh, especially for rhinos because rhinos um, and especially the Indian rhinos tend to rub their horns against everything. So um, if they rub their horns against uh, some concrete pieces or some metal pieces or something like that, they uh, not only can hurt themselves but they also can uh, do damage to, uh, to their horns. And so um, often they have some of these wooden pieces against the wall so that the rhinos can rub their horns or um, yeah, their self against it without doing any damage to themselves. And it also looks nice. So some decoration for our backstage. I saw this so often using these uh, wall pieces or these uh, decoration pieces uh, for, uh, for some kind of a notification board or whatever it might be called in English. I never did that, um, but this time I thought I need to copy this because this uh, just looks too good and uh, yeah, I just had to do that. And it's an easy way to do something for your backstage areas without taking too much time or too many pieces. Yeah, here I tried something that I saw from uh, PS Vision Gaming. Um, 
His builds are very insane, so he's going so much into detail, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just insane. So when he's uh, building something like doors and gates, he always uh, or many times uses those pieces that we got from the Europe DLC, I think it was, for, uh, for the windows. And I was trying to do that as well. In my mind, I thought when I do that and use those pieces, I could use the doors to actually open up in the perfect angle so um, that I could open and close them and play around with that a little bit. Well, it didn't do this way, but uh, yeah, I still like playing around with it and using those pieces and having a different kind of a door in here and not those pieces that I usually use for gates for uh, for the animals uh, habitats we're also going to do something about the uh, exit for the hippos as well but that's going to be in the not in the next episode, but the episode afterwards when we are actually going to build the habitat for the pygmy hippos. So the next episode is also going to be a smaller one, a uh, shorter one, because uh, yeah, the house is already built. The only thing that we have to do in the next episode is going to build the habitat for uh, the Red River Hawks. So that is going to happen and uh, that's not going to take too much time. I try to be a little bit creative and do some special things or some nice things for the habitat as well. But to be fair, many things that I used for the habitat for the Red River Hawks I also did use for other animals. So I didn't come up with some new fencing or uh, some new or very new decorational stuff because if we keep it realistic, you will see the same things over and over again in, uh, in every zoo. So there's going to be a slight differences, uh, of course, um, so that's why I'm doing stuff like building those houses and, uh, and stuff like that. I'm not going to copy and paste for every animal, but there's some things in, the, uh, in a zoo that you yeah, just use all the time and why should I invent all the things every time anew when we still, uh, when we already do have functioning pieces in there. What I'm doing right here is building the, yeah, the main construct for our roof, which is going to be very much glass and also these artificial grass roof pieces that we got from the conservation DLC. I really like those pieces and I really wanted to have something like here so that it would blend with the area a little bit. And um, yeah, it was not that easy to do that, but uh, yeah, let's say it was much easier than the roof for our Madagascar house that we did. So it was not that bad. So once again, I'm doing the same thing that we did with the entrance to the house. I just copied those pieces and made a circle shape form to put it onto the walls once it was finished. It didn't line up perfectly and that is something that bothers me a little bit, but yeah, in the end it just looks pretty nice. Just deleting all the pieces that we don't need anymore. And then I did cut out a lot of stuff because, uh, yeah, you don't need to see me all the time to copy those pieces around. So I copied everything and closed the roof. Um, had something similar for the part with the hawks, just a flat roof with uh, the same glass pieces. Um, also built a little bit of support structure for the roof in there because you know 
I had this uh, building contest running and I always was criticizing the roof structure of uh, the contestants and said that it wouldn't be able to hold up in reality so uh, yeah I just can't build something that uh, wouldn't hold up in reality so I had to do something like that Yeah, I can't criticize others and uh, not doing it better by myself, I guess. Yeah, just a little bit more decoration and then we are already in the real-time part again. So at this point, uh, all that I have to say right now is, you know, if you like the video, just hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and tune in next Monday as well when we are going to co uh, to continue building in here and giving the Red River Hawks their habitat in Brooksburg Zoo. Okay guys, let's hope we see you next week. <laughs> Bye then.